Vicksburg, her guns dominating the river from high bluffs and defended by thousands of troops, was the key point. Taking it presented one of the war's most difficult problems to Admiral Porter and to General Grant, who had an outstanding appreciation of naval power in broad strategy and combined operations. In January 1863, their combined forces were on the river above Vicksburg. The fleet included 11 ironclads, numerous wooden gunboats and auxiliaries. The previous month, Porter had dispatched five gunboats up the Yazoo River in support of the army. The ironclad Cairo was blasted to the bottom by a Confederate torpedo. During the winter, High water thwarted Grant's attempts to march below Vicksburg and encircle the city. To block the vital Confederate Red River supply route, Porter sent the fast ram Queen of the West past Vicksburg. But she ran aground under fire and was captured, and later, with other Confederate ships, attacked the Federal ironclad Indianola, which had also run below Vicksburg. The Indianola was sunk by a superior force. The Confederates attempted salvage, then destroyed her when an ominous looking ship suddenly appeared. This craft was only a dummy set adrift by the Federal fleet above Vicksburg. Capture of the Queen of the West and destruction of the Indianola left the Red River supply line open, but only briefly, for Admiral Farragut advanced boldly up the Mississippi. Heavily fortified Fort Hudson stood between him and the Red River. At midnight, 14 March 1863, the Hartford led a small fleet close under Port Hudson's flaming guns. Most of the ships, badly damaged, drifted back downstream. The old side wheeler Mississippi was lost. Only the Hartford and the gunboat Albatross came through and steamed up to block the mouth of the Red River. Months had passed. All thrusts at Vicksburg had failed. But by mid-April, the ground was dry and Grant marched south on the west bank. He still had to cross the river. On the night of the 16th, Porter's ironclads and transports headed down the river. The swift, treacherous current pivoted the vessels around directly under Vicksburg's batteries. Yet all but one transport came through the withering fire. Porter's fleet moved farther downstream and transported the army to the east bank. Grant marched inland to invest Vicksburg from the east, while three naval groups blocked aid to the Confederates from south, west, and north. The northern group was ready with supplies when the army reached the Yazoo, and the Red Rover, first American hospital ship, stood by to care for the sick and wounded. After six weeks of siege, surrounded on water and land, and lacking naval strength to control the Mississippi, Vicksburg surrendered July 4th, 1863. Port Hudson followed quickly and the Confederacy was now finally cut in two. The Mississippi was again a great trade outlet to the sea for the Midwest. Conversely, supplies could no longer cross the river for the Southern armies. Losing the river and the sea, the South had lost the war. The very day Vicksburg surrendered, far across country in Pennsylvania, Lee's shattered army was withdrawing from the hills of Gettysburg after losing the decisive battle of the war in the East. Charleston, South Carolina had been a primary objective ever since the war started here at Fort Sumter. In 1863, it was the strong link in the Confederacy's most powerfully defended harbor. Across the main channel stretched obstructions and rows of torpedoes. On 7 April, 1863, Nine ironclads from a large fleet commanded by Admiral DuPont advanced up the channel. They were met by a hail of fire from Forts Sumter, Moultrie, and Wagner. The ship's cannonade heavily damaged Fort Sumter, 
But in two hours, the forts scored over 500 hits on the ironclads. Five ships were disabled. The Keokuk, riddled by 90 hits, sank the next morning. The attack was broken off. Three months later, the fleet, now under Admiral Dahlgren, again tried the Charleston defenses. Still, the forts withstood numerous and furious naval assaults extending over a two-month period. The ships withdrew to blockade stations off the harbor. To strike against this fleet, the Confederates had developed several unusual vessels. One type, the David, was cigar-shaped about 50 feet by seven, and mounted a spar torpedo at the bow. It ran low in the water, almost submerged. A David severely damaged the North's largest ironclad, New Ironsides, in a surprise night attack, 5 October, 1863. The H.L. Hunley was a true submarine, with lateral fins and ballast tanks for submersion. Eight men turning the crankshaft were the engine. Four times the Hunley sank to the bottom and brave men perished. Each time when raised, new volunteers appeared. The fifth crew was allowed to volunteer under orders to operate on the surface only. One night in February 1864, she rammed a spar torpedo into the side of the new federal steam sloop Housatonic which sank in less than five minutes. The Hunley also sank for the last time. Yet she had pointed the way to the vast impact upon sea power and history of the submarine today. The North Carolina sounds had been sealed off by the Federal Navy since early in the war. But far up the Roanoke River, in another attempt to break the choking blockade, the Confederates built a powerful ironclad ram, the Albemarle. In April 1864, she came downriver and rammed two federal gunboats, sinking one. The next month, the Albemarle engaged seven vessels in a fierce four-hour battle before darkness halted the action. Federal ironclads drew too much water to reach the shallow draft Albemarle. So Lieutenant William B. Cushing undertook her destruction. Cushing equipped a small boat with a spar torpedo in a fashion similar to a Confederate David. On a stormy night, 27 October 1864, he approached his prey, which was lying beyond a protecting boom of logs. Cushing ordered full speed ahead. The small craft rode up on the logs and the torpedo exploded against the ironclad. As Cushing swam from the scene, the Albemarle and the swamped torpedo boat settled to the bottom. Another serious Confederate threat to the blockade had been eliminated. <laughs>